I will liken thee, O house of Israel, like unto a tame olive tree, which a man took and nourished in his vineyard. And it grew and waxed old and began to decay. And it came to pass that the master of the vineyard went forth, and he saw that his olive tree began to decay. And he said, I will prune it and dig about it and nourish it, that perhaps it may shoot forth young and tender branches, and it perish not. And it came to pass that after many days it began to put forth somewhat a little young and tender branches. But behold, the main top thereof began to perish. And the master saw it, and he said unto his servant, It grieveth me that I should lose this tree. Wherefore go and pluck the branches from a wild olive tree, and bring them hither unto me. And we will pluck off those main branches which are beginning to wither away, and we will cast them into the fire, that they may be burned. And behold, I take away many of these young and tender branches, and I will graft them whithersoever I will. And it mattereth not that if it so be that the root of the tree will perish, I may preserve the fruit thereof unto myself. And it came to pass that the servant grafted in the branches of the wild olive tree, and the Lord of the vineyard caused that it should be digged about and pruned and nourished. Go thy way, watch the tree, and nourish it according to my words. And these will I place in the nethermost part of my vineyard, whithersoever I will, it mattereth not unto thee. And I do it that I may preserve unto myself the natural branches of the tree, and also that I may lay up fruit thereof against the season unto myself, for it grieveth me that I should lose this tree and the fruit thereof. And it came to pass that a long time passed away, and the Lord of the vineyard said unto his servant, Come, let us go down into the vineyard, that we may labor in the vineyard. Behold, look here, behold the tree. Behold, the branches of the wild olive tree have taken hold of the moisture of the root thereof, and the root thereof hath brought forth much strength. And because of the much strength of the root thereof, the wild branches have brought forth tame fruit. Now, if we had not grafted in these branches, the tree thereof would have perished. And now, behold, I shall lay up much fruit, which the tree thereof hath brought forth. Come. Let us go to the nethermost part of the vineyard, and behold if the natural branches of the tree have not brought forth much fruit also. And it came to pass that they went forth. And he beheld the first, that it had brought forth much fruit. And he beheld also that it was good. Take of the fruit thereof. For behold, this long time have I nourished it, and it hath brought forth much fruit. How comest thou hither to plant this branch of the tree? For behold, it was the poorest spot in all the land of thy vineyard. Counsel me not. I knew that it was a poor spot of ground. Wherefore I said unto thee, I have nourished it this long time, and thou beholdest that it hath brought forth much fruit. Look hither. Behold, I have planted another branch of the tree also, and thou knowest that this spot of ground was poorer than the first. But behold the tree. I have nourished it this long time, and it hath brought forth much fruit. Therefore gather it, and lay it up against the season, that I may preserve it unto mine own self. Look hither, and behold another branch also, which I have planted. Behold, I have nourished it also, and it hath brought forth fruit. Look hither, and behold the last. Behold, this have I planted in a good spot of ground, and I have nourished it this long time, and only a part of the tree hath brought forth tame fruit, and the other part of the tree hath brought forth wild fruit. Behold, I have nourished this tree like unto the others. Pluck off the branches that have not brought forth good fruit, and cast them into the fire. Let us prune it, and dig about it, and nourish it a little longer, that perhaps it may bring forth good fruit unto thee. And it came to pass that the Lord of the vineyard and the servant of the Lord of the vineyard did nourish all the fruit of the vineyard. And it came to pass that a long time had passed away. And the Lord of the vineyard said unto his servant, Come, let us go down into the vineyard, that we may labor again in the vineyard. For behold, the time draweth near, and the end soon cometh. Wherefore, I must lay up fruit against the season unto mine own self. 
And they came to the tree whose natural branches had been broken off, and the wild branches had been grafted in. And behold, all sorts of fruit did cumber the tree. Behold, this long time have we nourished this tree, and I have laid up unto myself against the season much fruit. But behold, this time it hath brought forth much fruit, and there is none of it which is good. And behold, there are all kinds of bad fruit, and it profiteth me nothing, notwithstanding all our labor. And now it grieveth me that I should lose this tree. What shall we do unto the tree, that I may preserve again good fruit thereof unto mine own self? Behold, because thou didst graft in the branches of the wild olive tree, they have nourished the roots, that they are alive, and they have not perished. Wherefore, thou beholdest that they are yet good. I know that the roots are good, and for mine own purpose I have preserved them. And because of their much strength they have hitherto brought forth from the wild branches good fruit. But behold, the wild branches have grown and have overrun the roots thereof, and hath brought forth much evil fruit, that it beginneth to perish, and it will soon become ripened, that it may be cast into the fire, except we should do something for it to preserve it. Let us go down into the nethermost parts of the vineyard, and behold if the natural branches have also brought forth evil fruit. And it came to pass that they went down into the nethermost parts of the vineyard, And they beheld that the fruit of the natural branches had become corrupt also. Yea, the first, and the second, and also the last. And they had all become corrupt. And the wild fruit of the last had overcome that part of the tree which had brought forth good fruit, even that the branch had withered away and died. What could I have done more for my vineyard? Behold, all the trees of my vineyard are good for nothing, save it to be hewn down and cast into the fire. And behold, this last, whose branch hath withered away, I did plant in a good spot of ground, yea, even that which was choice unto me above all other parts of the land of my vineyard. And thou beheldest that I also cut down that which cumbered this spot of ground, that I might plant this tree in the stead thereof. And thou beheldest that a part thereof brought forth good fruit, and a part thereof brought forth wild fruit. And because I plucked not the branches thereof and cast them into the fire, behold, they have overcome the good branch, that it hath withered away. And now behold... Notwithstanding all the care we have taken of my vineyard, the trees thereof have become corrupted, that they bring forth no good fruit, and these I had hoped to preserve. It grieveth me that I should lose them. But what could I have done more in my vineyard? Have I slackened mine hand, that I have not nourished it? Nay, I have nourished it. And I have digged about it, and I have pruned it, and I have dunged it, and I have stretched forth mine hand almost all the day long, and the end draweth nigh, and it grieveth me that I should hew down all the trees of my vineyard, and cast them into the fire, that they should be burned. Who is it that has corrupted my vineyard? Is it not the loftiness of thy vineyard? Have not the branches thereof overcome the roots, which are good? Behold, they grew faster than the strength of the roots, taking strength unto themselves. Behold, I say, is not this the cause that the trees of thy vineyard have become corrupted? Let us go to and hew down the trees of the vineyard, and cast them into the fire, that they shall not cumber the ground of my vineyard, for I have done all. What could I have done more for my vineyard? Spare it a little longer? Yea, I will spare it a little longer, for it grieveth me that I should lose the trees of my vineyard. Wherefore, let us take of the branches of these which I have planted in the nethermost parts of my vineyard, and let us graft them into the tree from whence they came. And let us pluck from the tree those branches whose fruit is most bitter, and graft in the natural branches of the tree in the stead thereof. And behold, 
The roots of the natural branches of the tree, which I planted whithersoever I would, are yet alive. Yea, I will graft in unto them the branches of their mother tree, that when they shall be sufficiently strong, perhaps they may bring forth good fruit unto me, and I may yet have glory in the fruit of my vineyard. Pluck not the wild branches from the trees, save it be those which are most bitter, and in them ye shall graft according to that which I have said. And this I do, that perhaps the roots thereof may take strength because of their goodness, and because of the change of the branches, that the good may overcome the evil. And perhaps that I may rejoice exceedingly that I have preserved the roots and the branches of the first fruit. Wherefore, go to and call servants, that we may labor diligently with our might in the vineyard, that we may prepare the way, that I may bring forth again the natural fruit, which natural fruit is good, and the most precious above all other fruit. Wherefore, let us go and labor with our might this last time, for behold, the end draweth nigh, and this is for the last time that I shall prune my vineyard. Graft in the branches, and dig about the trees, both old and young, the first and the last, and the last and the first, that all may be nourished once again for the last time. And if it so be that these last grafts shall grow, and bring forth natural fruit, then shall ye prepare the way for them, that they may grow. Wherefore ye shall clear away the bad according as the good shall grow, that the root and the top may be equal in strength, until the good shall overcome the bad, and the bad shall be hewn down and cast into the fire, that they cumber not the ground of my vineyard. And thus will I sweep away the bad out of my vineyard. And the servant went, and did as the Lord had commanded him, and brought other servants, and they were few. And it came to pass that the servants did go and labor with their mites, and the Lord of the vineyard labored also with them, and they did obey the commandments of the Lord of the vineyard in all things. And there began to be the natural fruit again in the vineyard. And the natural branches began to grow and thrive exceedingly. And the wild branches began to be plucked off and to be cast away. And they did keep the root and the top thereof equal, according to the strength thereof. And thus they labored with all their diligence, even until the bad had been cast away out of the vineyard. And the Lord had preserved unto himself that the trees had become again the natural fruit. And they became like unto one body, and the fruits were equal. Behold, for this last time have we nourished my vineyard, and thou beholdest that I have done according to my will. And I have preserved the natural fruit that it is good, even like as it was in the beginning. And blessed art thou. For because ye have been diligent in laboring with me in my vineyard, and have kept my commandments, and have brought unto me again the natural fruit, that my vineyard is no more corrupted, and the bad is cast away, behold, ye shall have joy with me because of the fruit of my vineyard. And when the time cometh that evil fruit shall again come into my vineyard, then will I cause the good and the bad to be gathered, and the good will I preserve unto myself, and the bad will I cast away into its own place. And then cometh the season and the end.